It's been a long time since we last spoke about Cavalry, almost two years actually. Even from the very first beta, it was obvious how powerful Cavalry was. The team behind the application managed to not only build a very capable competitor to After Effects, but also introduced beautiful procedural workflows that were previously only available in tools like MoGraph. This procedurality is perfect for a lot of different things, from character animations to generative art. But there's another area where I think Cavalry shines, and that's showcasing UI interfaces and user interactions. Tools like Adobe XD or Figma have very basic animations to very roughly explain how an interface element will work. But with Cavalry, we have this amazing toolset that allows us to build pretty much anything we can imagine. So in this video, we will take advantage of Cavalry's procedural workflows to build a very simple speedometer. In the end, everything from the animation to the text and colors will be easy to adjust. Let's get started. First off, if you want to follow along, you can download all the necessary files from my website. I'll have the link in the description below. Now, let's start with the easy part, the graphics. I designed all the necessary elements in Illustrator, but you could use uh, Cavalry or any other vector application for that. The only element I didn't draw in Illustrator was the progress bar, because we will use a specific Cavalry element for that. I just used a placeholder in Illustrator just to gauge the position of things. Cavalry reads vectors, so exporting these elements as an SVG file will work perfectly fine. Now, let's see how things look in Cavalry. The step 1 file has all the elements imported and grouped accordingly, but if you want to start from scratch, you can import the SVG file yourself by dragging it into the viewport. Once you click on it, with the Edit Shape tool, Cavalry will ask if we want to make the shape editable. After clicking yes, Everything will be in an editable vector form, so we can change colors, adjust the shapes, and so on and so forth. Now, let's start with the progress bar. This is a unique cavalry element, and it's underneath the star object. This element gives us a lot of different options. We can rotate the element altogether, we can change the inner and outer radius, and we can also adjust the start and end angles. The start and end angles are extremely useful to us since that's the way we will shrink and expand the progress bar. Let's see how we can style this bar. We need to round the edges and to do that we'll use a bevel deformer. Then it's just a matter of adjusting the radius to get the desired result. We need two copies of our progress bar, one that will act as the background and another one for the actual animation. Let's give the background bar a light color, and then copy and paste to get a second copy. Let's rename the two arcs accordingly. And since we don't need to animate the background, we can just place it inside the small details folder. Just so we're a little bit more organized. Now we need to color our progress bar. We want to have one color when it's zero, and another one when it's at 100%. We can do that easily with a gradient. So let's go to the Fill tab, and in the Shader section, we need to select the Gradient Shader. Let's edit the gradient so it works exactly the way we want to. Linear gradient is not going to work, because when shortening and expanding the bar, the colors don't change the way we want to. We need the Sweep Gradient option, and now if we play around with the Start Angle, the colors change correctly. I chose to go from yellow to red, but feel free to use any colors you want. So far, so good. Now let's see how we can start animating things. The idea is that as the needle rotates, the progress bar will follow along. As the bar moves, the text will update accordingly and will give us a numerical value between 0 and 100. Your initial instinct might be to connect the rotation of the needle to the start angle, but as you can see, if we do that, the results are kinda unpredictable. The progress bar does grow and shrink as we move the needle around, so we do get the result we want, but the needle points to a completely different place than the bar. So we need to think of another approach. We basically need to map the start and end rotations of the needle to the start and end positions of the progress bar. These two objects have different numerical values, so we need something in between to remap between these values. This can be handled with a behavior called number range. As you can see here, this node accepts a value, in this case the rotation of the needle, 
a minimum and maximum value the needle will operate on, and finally a minimum and maximum target value for the destination, our progress bar. We're basically remapping the values of our needle to values that progress bar can understand. Let's set things up. Let's start with the needle. The needle should operate between 60 and minus 203. Let's add these values to the min-max range, 60 and minus 203. Perfect. Now let's take care of the progress bar. The progress bar should operate between 45 and 302. Since the 302 is the starting value, we will put it into the minimum value and 45 into the maximum value. Awesome. Our node is now set up. We just need to connect things together. The value that is going to be remapped is the rotation of the needle. That means we need to connect the rotation of the needle to the value field. Now, as you can see, as we rotate the needle, the rotation number is mirrored in the range node. Now we need whatever number comes out of the number node to drive the length of the progress bar. So we'll grab the output and connect it to the start angle. And as you can see, the progress bar immediately jumps to the start. So now as we rotate the needle, the progress bar follows along. Even if the needle goes over, the progress bar doesn't follow along because we've set specific boundaries. Cool. Now let's see how we can make our text change values. Nothing's really different here. It's exactly the same approach. We're going to remap the position of the needle to a number that will then be displayed as a piece of text. So let's copy and paste our range number node and let's do some cleanup. The needle is copied as well because it's trying to maintain the connections, but we don't need it. We can use the original needle to read the data. Let's also clean up the naming a little bit. The first number range is for the progress bar and the other one is for the text. We still need the min and max values of the needle, so let's connect the rotation of the needle to the value of our range node. Now we need to adjust the output. So instead of using these numbers, we'll go from 0 to 100. In order for the text to give us a numerical value, we can use a special generator. It's called string generator. And we have multiple options to choose from. Date and time, random number, time code, but the one we need is the default one, value. But we need to adjust things a little bit. The numbers are way too many for our needs. We only need three numbers, and the precision can go all the way down to zero. Cool, let's plug things together. We need the output of the number range to feed into the number field of this string generator. When we rotate the needle, the numbers change, but they're the other way around. We can fix that easily by going into this graph and flipping the values. So when the needle is at zero, the text reads zero. And when we go all the way up to 100, the text reads 100. Perfect, we're all set. We could finish up this tutorial right here, but we can make things a little bit prettier. Instead of having to go to the rotation field of the needle and having to remember the min and max values, we could drive all that with a slider. Let's do that. We'll use one of Cavalry's newer features, the animation control. It's a simple interface element that just has a slider. What we need to do now is map a piece of animation to this slider. In this case, the animation will be the needle rotating from 0 to 100. We just need two keyframes for that. The length of the animation or easing in and out doesn't matter at all. All that will be handled later on from the animation control slider. So let's set a keyframe for the zero position and a keyframe for the maximum position. All that's left is to connect the animation control node or the amount value of the node to the rotation of the needle. And that's it, now the slider controls the whole animation. We could either start adding keyframes or we could go again one step further. We can actually have the needle move about without using any keyframes. The whole movement can be handled by a noise behavior. The movement of the noise will control the movement of our animation slider. The animation behavior has different noises to choose from, along with settings for noise speed, noise position, etc. It's a little bit difficult to visualize in Cavalry, but I can easily show you in Cinema. This is essentially what's going on behind the scenes in Cavalry. We have a noise that moves around based on different values, we can adjust the animation speed, we can adjust the type of noise, and based on those things we can generate values that affect our animation. 
So let's go back to Calvary. Like before, we need to map the values of the noise to values that the animation control will understand. So we will need another number range behavior that will act as the middleman between the noise and the needle rotation. We can use minus 10 and 10 for min and max values, since these are the min and max values of the noise behavior. For the minimum and max value of the needle, we can do 0 to 100, but it's not also necessary. I'll show you what I mean in a little bit. So let's plug in the noise output to the value field of the animation control. And let's finally plug in the number range node to the animation control. And that's it. Now our speedometer moves around without us using any keyframes. The cool thing is that we also have a ton of control over the animation. For example, by adjusting the time scale, we can make the animation move along faster or slower. We can also loop the animation so everything is seamless. And if we don't want the needle to go all the way up to 100%, we can just clamp the values to something lower. So we could just have the speedometer move from 0 to 30 or 40%. There's a ton of different ways we can adjust the animation. So you can imagine now a scenario where we could have multiple versions of these speedometers all doing their own thing, and most importantly, without us setting up a single keyframe. As you can see, Cavalry can be incredibly powerful and it's not really that difficult to get into. Everything you might have learned in Cinema 4D or other animation software can be easily transferred through. So I would say you just need a couple of minutes to get acquainted with uh, how the software works and then you're off to the races. And that's about it for this uh, video. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer them in the comments below. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.